the eighth most common question asked by a non-Muslim is that why does Islam permit a Muslim to have non-veg food? You know, killing animal is a ruthless act. So why does Islam permit a Muslim to have non-vegetarian food? I would like to mention at the outset that a Muslim can be a very good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. There's no verse in the Quran that, that says it's compulsory for the Muslim to have non-veg food. But since the Quran and our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given permission for the human beings to have non-veg, why should we not have? The Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number five, verse number one. Ya ayyuhalazina amnu, O you believe, fulfill your obligations and eat of the four-footed animals with the exception in name. Eat of the meat of the four-footed animals with the exception in name. Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number five. We have created for you cattle. And from it, you derive warmth and many benefits. And of the meat you can eat. Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 21, that verily in the cattle is an instructive sign for you. We give you to drink from what is within the bodies. And you derive many benefits from them. And of their meat you can eat. So when Quran has given permission to have the meat of the lawful animals, then why should we Muslim not have it? Let's analyze the scientific as well as the logical reasons for having non-veg food. Today, science tells us that in non-vegetarian food, it is a wholesome food. It's rich in protein. And the body requires amino acid. There are eight amino acids which are not created in the body. It has to be given by the external diet. It's known as essential amino acids. Only in the flesh food do you have all the eight essential amino acids. Therefore, the meat is called as a complete protein. There is no vegetarian food which has all the essential amino acids in it. Furthermore, meat is rich in niacin, vitamin B, and it's a wholesome food. There are many non-Muslims, especially the Hindus, they say that, why do Muslims have non-veg? Indians, besides India, they're present throughout the world, 20% population of the world. You go to any part in the world, USA, Canada, UK, Dubai, you'll find Indians there. So it has become a common question throughout the world. I tell them that if you analyze the set of teeth of the herbivorous animals, cow, goat, sheep, they only have vegetables. If you see the set of teeth, they have a flat set of teeth called as herbivorous set of teeth. If we analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animals who only have flesh food, Lion, tiger, leopard, they have pointed set of teeth. They have the canine set of teeth. If you analyze the set of teeth of the human beings, if you go in the mirror and see, we have flat teeth as well as pointed teeth. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us the pointed teeth, the canine teeth? For what? <laughs> to have non-veg. Furthermore, if we analyze the diocese system of the herbivorous animals, cow, goat, sheep, they can only digest vegetables. If they take flesh food, they will not be able to digest it. If we analyze the digestive system of the carnivorous animals, the tiger, the leopard, the lion, they can only digest flesh food. They cannot digest vegetables. But the digestive system of the human beings can digest veg food as well as non-veg food. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us a digestive system which can even digest non-veg food? But natural to have it. We have a small intestine as well as a large intestine for having both veg food and non-veg food. We are neither herbivorous, neither carnivorous. We are omnivorous. And many of the Hindus have a misconception that Hinduism prohibits a human being from having non-veg food. If you read the scriptures of the Hindus, in several scriptures, several places it says that sages, saints, had non-veg food. If you read Manusmriti, chapter number five, verse number 30, it says that the eater, if he eats the flesh of the thing which is to be eaten, then it is good, even if he does it day after day, because God has created some to be eaten 
and some to become eater. When you read Manu Smriti, chapter number 5, verse number 31, it says that eating meat in sacrifice is not a sin. It is the law of the gods. It's mentioned in Manu Smriti, chapter number 5, verse number 39, as well as 40, that God created sacrificial animals. So killing animals in sacrifice is not considered as killing. Furthermore, when you read Mahabharat, Anushasan Parv, chapter number 88, regarding the Pandavas, the five brothers, the eldest brother Yudhishthir, he asks Bhishma that while they were doing puja, yagna for the ancestors, he asks Bhishma that what should we give in puja, in yagna, so that our ancestors will be satisfied. So Bhishma replies that if you put in the puja herbs, vegetables, and fruits, the ancestors will be satisfied for one month. If you give fish, two months. If you give meat, three months. If you give hair, four months. If you give meat of the goat, five months. If you give bacon, meat of the pig, six months. If you give birds, seven months. If you give deer, eight months. And the menu continues. If you give a buffalo, 11 months. And if you give cow, our ancestors will be satisfied for one full year. That is beef. And if you give rhinoceros meat or red meat of goat, our ancestors will be satisfied inexhaustibly. There's a big menu, imagine. Vegetables, fish, meat, hair, what, everything is there in the menu. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, it was permitted to have non-veg. It is later on when the Hindus were being influenced by other non-Hindus and tried to take their philosophy that they converted and tried to make their religion into vegetarianism, though all Hindus aren't vegetarians. Now when we ask these people that why are you a vegetarian, they tell us that killing animal is a sin. Because killing living creatures is a sin. So I said, I agree with you. If a person can live without killing living creatures, I'm with you. Today, science tells us that even the plants have got life. Previously, people did not know that plants and vegetables had life. So now the logic has changed. No, no, we understand, we realize plants have got life, but plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing animal is a bigger sin as compared to killing a plant. Now, science has further advanced and we have come to know that even the plants can feel pain. Though we cannot hear the cry of the plant, but even the plants can feel pain. They don't have a very well-developed system, but they can feel pain. And there was a research in America that a farmer had made a graduate where you could make the cry of the plant be heard to the human ear. Because the human ear only hears between 20 cycles to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above this, the human being can't hear. Like this is below 20 cycles, I can't hear. If I do fast, I can hear because it's above 20 cycles. You know, the dogs, they can hear up to 40,000 cycles per second. So you may have heard about the silent dog whistle. You blow the whistle, the frequency is between 20,000 and 40,000 cycles per second. The human beings can't hear, the dog here and comes to the master. So the cry of the plant cannot be heard by the human being. So there was a research done in America where a farmer makes a gadget and whenever the plant wanted more water, it would cry out, he used to convert the cry and he could hear it. So today, Science tells us that even the plants can feel pain. So now, there is a non-Muslim argument with Maxim, he said, okay, but there's Akira, I agree with you, the plants have got life, the plants can feel pain, but you know, plants have got about two senses less as compared to animals. You know, animals have got five senses, plants have got three senses. So I say, okay, for sake of argument, I agree with you. The plants have got three senses, animal has got five senses. So I ask him the question, that suppose if you have a brother, who's born deaf and dumb. And if someone comes and kills him, will you go and tell the judge, me Lord, give this murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less? <laughs> In fact, you'll go and tell the judge, give this murderer double punishment. My brother was masoom, could not hear, could not speak. Give him double punishment. So where is the logic two senses less or less punishment? 
In Islam, it does not work two senses less or two senses more. Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 168, eat of the things which are good and halal for you. What is permitted and what is good you can have. So what is halal, what is lawful, and what is permitted and what is good you can have. As far as non-Muslims who are against eating non-veg, you know, if I agree that, fine, we should not kill any animals, you know, the population of the cattle, it grows so fast that if we stop eating animals, there'll be overpopulation of cattle in the world. So now we have overpopulation of human beings in some countries, India, China, we'll have problems with overpopulation of cattle. And personally, if non-Muslims don't have non-veg, I've got no problem. Believe me, I've got no problem. Because if in India, all the non-Muslims start having non-veg, then maybe the price of mutton and beef will go up. So for me, no problem. If they don't have non-veg, I've got no problem. But if someone tells me that eating non-veg is haram, it's a sin, that's the time I give all this logical explanation.